going on, Kick Family? And welcome back to another exciting episode of Kick in the Bistro with me, your host, Chef Cornelius, featuring me. So today, I'm going to give you a little rundown on my business. So, you know, this show, we kind of feature cooks and chefs and give you the rundown on their business. But today, I want to give you an insight of mine. So, here it is. I'm Chef Cornelius. I'm actually a private chef here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, but I just recently got into catering. And so I had a catering side, the private chef side, and I also do YouTube. So um, I got that side as well. So I'm gonna try to give you all three of those entities. Uh, but tonight we're gonna focus more on our private chef side. And my private chef side, I feature a lot of exciting things, but the biggest request I always get is steaks. And so today I'm gonna cook for you a ribeye steak. Now, um, when you're deciding about steaks, uh, it's, you got three different um, selections, well, three different um, primary selections, and that'd be your select, your choice, and your prime. Um, now, you do have like Wagyu and A5 Wagyu, and those would be more pricier options, but today we're gonna focus on those three and then let you know what steak we actually have tonight. So, you have, like I said, you have select, you have choice, and you have prime. Tonight, we're gonna deal with prime. Now, select is maybe a couple steps above like the meats that they use to make your, your dog food and stuff with. And the step above select will be choice, will be the most common um, form of beef or you'll get at a restaurant. So um, a lot of times when you order beef from a restaurant, more, more than likely it'll be choice. And um, when you go to your more high-end steakhouses, that's when you're dealing with more prime beef. Um, but today we have prime. And what makes a steak prime is the marbleization inside the meat. So as you see all those fat um, um, segments inside of the steak, that is the marbleization um, that you're looking for. And you kind of want that marbling um, when it comes to steaks because that's where your flavor is coming from. Um, a lot of times, well, especially when I was younger, um, I wanted to see like a completely like red piece of meat. If it had fat in there, I didn't really want that. But I didn't know that that's where the flavor would come from. And at the time, that's when, you know, you cook that meat and you realize that it's not flavorful because you don't have nothing that's based in the steak from within. And that's what the marbleization is doing for the steaks. So the first thing you want to do is get you a steak and um, bring it up to room temperature. Uh, some people say that's a myth, but it kind of cooks evenly that way. But you want to bring it up to room temperature and set it on top of a wire rack. And once you set it on top of the wire rack, we're going to begin to season it. Now let's talk about salt. Now, we are going to sous vide this steak. So you want to remember that whatever you put on this steak, it's going to absorb in the steak versus you putting the salt on the steak and searing it and actually losing about 30% in the searing process. So with seasonings, like I said, you got your salt here. You can use iodized salt, which I highly don't recommend you using, uh, but use your good coarse salt, um, maybe a kosher salt, sea salt. Um, that way you don't over salt your food and you can actually see the granules on the steak as you season. So want to season from up above. And like I said, this is a pound of meat, so it could take a lot of seasonings. And once you get your salt on there, going on with some freshly cracked black pepper. Make sure you get that black pepper on there. And you want to use freshly cracked um, just because the flavors are more intense and you get more of that pepper flavor with it being freshly cracked. So we're going to flip the steak over and do the exact same seasonings on the opposite side as well. Now, since we use this wire grate, it's perfect. So we can actually take our steak, move the wire grate, and actually season the fat cap and the sides. So we actually not wasting any salt. So we got our steak already seasoned. So we're gonna pop it back on the rack. And we're actually gonna slide this to the side and we're gonna begin work on our aromatics. So the first thing we wanna do is get our garlic together. Now this here is elephant garlic. Now the thing I like about elephant garlic is, first the size, but it gives you a more milder garlic flavor. It's not pungent like regular garlic, almost like a mellow onion flavor mixed with garlic. So. Uh, if I can sum it in a nutshell, it's almost like a shallot. Um, but we're gonna get that together. Now, elephant garlic is huge. So what you wanna do is take your knife. Now, you don't wanna crush too hard, but you wanna just give it a little, a little whack, like that. And once you do that, you can go ahead and peel everything off of it. 
And the texture of elephant garlic, it's kind of like an apple. That's the, the kind of texture it gives you. Uh, but what we're gonna do is actually slice, let's get a piece we can slice. We're gonna slice a couple slices and we're gonna actually place those slices on top of the steak. So let's go in the middle here, begin to slice. And you can make them almost like a quarter, quarter of an inch thick. And those are gonna be the four slices we're gonna actually pop on the steak. So slide this aside, bring our steak back into the frame. Then we're just gonna layer our garlic on top of the steak. Now remember, whatever garlic we put in here, we're still gonna base with it as well. So you don't have to actually put a lot into this bag because it's gonna be closed off with no oxygen. So uh, it's gonna perfume this steak through osmosis. So this steak is gonna pick up heavy garlic flavor. Plus we're gonna base with the garlic as well. So with the garlic, then we have also, we're gonna add rosemary. And let's do it like a sprig of rosemary. And then we're gonna also add thyme. Now you can add oregano or whatever flavors you like when it comes to herbs, but rosemary, thyme, and garlic, perfect mixture for a steak, in my opinion. And when you book with Riley and Company, that's the mixture you're gonna get from me. So, and with thyme, you can go on with a little bit more thyme uh, than rosemary. Um, thyme is more subtle than rosemary. Rosemary, if you put a lot on there, it can kind of um, take over the flavors of the steak, but with the herbs, you want them to complement the steak and not take over. You want to still taste the steak, but you want to have those elements in the background that's really like just bringing all the everything together. So go ahead and add our thyme on there. Now we're going to take the steak and go ahead and vacuum seal it. So you're going to actually place that steak into a vacuum seal bag. Now remember, we're actually using a commercial vacuum sealer here, but you could do the same process at home with a food saver, or you can actually use a Ziploc bag and place it into water, and that water will actually push the air out of the bag, and you can seal it that way as well. All right, so we got it all vacuum sealed up. It's pretty much just locking everything in place, and I'm gonna pop it in a, a sous vide bag. Now, let's go into a sous vide. Now, sous vide is a French term, which means under vacuum. And pretty much, you see, we put the steak under vacuum seal, um, but we're also gonna cook it submerged into a water bath. Now, the beautiful thing about sous vide is, when you're cooking a steak, uh, you know you got your temperatures with medium rare, um, well, rare, medium rare, medium, medium well and well done. Now, when you're cooking in a saute pan, Sometimes you gotta continue to stick your steaks with thermometers just to make sure um, it's cooking to the proper, proper temperature. Or some people can actually feel the steak as well to make sure uh, the temperature is, is on point. But with sous vide, you guarantee that from edge to edge that this steak is gonna be whatever temperature you set that sous vide valve at. And that's because the water circulated, make sure the temperature never rises above the temperature you set the sous vide at. So if the sous vide is set at 135, that temperature is gonna stay 135 throughout the entire cook cooking process or the entire duration of the cook. Um, but here's the thing about sous vide as well. It's gonna cook the steak, but when the steak come out, it's gonna look beige. It's not gonna have any color. It's just gonna be a cooked piece of meat, but you're gonna to have to sear the steak and that's where we equal the Maillard reaction which is gonna give us that flavor through caramelizing the natural sugars inside of the steak. So with this steak here, I just wanted to pretty much show you the process of actually prepping one, but we did one earlier, just to cut down on the cooking process for you guys. I know y'all wanna stay for two hours. So this guy has been hanging out in this water bath for actually two hours. Like I said, we sit it at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the perfect medium rare. By the time we sear it, it should be almost right at a medium. So we wanna go ahead and get this out of the package here. So all the aromatics that's in the package, you can go ahead and discard those because we don't need them anymore. And when we baste, we're gonna use new aromatics, so you don't have to worry about that. So go ahead and pop all that off, your garlic, your rosemary thyme, just pop it back in the bag and we'll discard all that. And like I said earlier, this steak is cooked 100%. So in theory, you can actually eat this steak right now, but we want flavor, we want to pack flavor on. So we're actually going to pat this thing dry and then go ahead and sear it. Like I told you about the Maillard reaction, just to caramelize those natural sugars on the uh, surface of the steak. 
and it's going to get equal out into a, a beautiful steak, a wonderful steak. So let's go ahead and try this thing off. So at Raleigh and Company, it's pretty much the most, I always say it's the most intimate dining experience you will ever receive. Um, not too my own horn, but uh, just put on the show. Um, it's about the food too, but it's also about the experience uh, that you're receiving. And my slogan is actually the intimate dining experience. So at Raleigh and Company, what we do is, uh, we mostly geared toward couples, um, but we do do dinner parties as well. But we actually bring the restaurant experience to your house. So instead of you going out, we bring that experience to your house. Uh, we bring everything, plate work, glassware, silverware. Um, so pretty much when you getting ready to go to dinner at Riley and Company, you're going to your kitchen, but you're coming to our restaurant. And that's how we treat it. Uh, everything is served course by course. We actually do five to six courses, depending on the menu you choose. And we serve it course style. So just like you was at a restaurant. And um, that's where we got this steak from. Um, this is, mo majority of the time it's served as the main entree. And like I said, this steak here is 16 ounces. So you can actually feed two people off this one steak, but some people like to order the steak for themselves, which I can't blame them. So go ahead and get this thing patted dry completely. And once we get it patted dry, we can actually pop a little bit more salt on there, but we're not gonna do that because we're actually gonna finish with some good finishing salt at the end. So um, we don't wanna add salt on now and then finish with salt. So we got this thing together. We're gonna take it over to the stove and go ahead and get it seared up. So the first thing you wanna do is get you two tablespoons of canola oil into a pan, get it ripping hot, and then place the steak directly into that hot oil, um, pressing down on the steak, making sure there's no air pockets and the entirety of that steak is touching every inch of that skillet. You want to let your steak roll for at least three minutes on each side without disturbing it and that's what's going to ensure that you have that perfect crust from edge to edge. Then you want to go ahead and flip the steak and if you did everything perfectly your crust will look exactly like that from edge to edge. So once you get to this step you want to sear it again for another two to three minutes just to lock in the um, opposite side we're going to begin to add our aromatics first we're going to go in with some butter and that's sweet cream unsalted butter and we're going in with about four knobs of butter that's about four teaspoons of butter and then we're going to throw in our thyme and our rosemary followed by our garlic and then we're going to begin to baste this thing and there's no right or wrong way to baste you just want to make sure you're flipping that oil that hot butter oil on top of that steak and through the process of osmosis you're actually incorporating all that flavor into that steak so this steak is going to taste exactly like thyme rosemary and garlic just by that bath so there you have it sear ribeye <clears throat> now we have the most critical step of cooking steak period and this is the waiting process so after you sear it you want to let it hang out for at least five minutes and what that's going to do is help the juices of the steak distribute back throughout the steak um, so what happens in the searing process is all the juices like compound to the center of the meat and if you take this directly out of the saute pan or a cast iron pan and then cut into it you're going to see a big pool of myoglobin and oil and juice um, everything that was going to keep that steak juicy will be on the board so by letting the steak rest, you allow that juice to distribute its way back through the steak, which will equal into a more tender and juicy steak as you eat it. So we're gonna let this hang out for five minutes. And during this five minute process, we're just gonna talk a little bit more about Riley and Company and the entities in Riley and Company. So we discussed the private chef part of Riley and Company, which I told you about. Um, we come to your house and turn that into a dining experience. But Riley & Company also is a catering company where we service um, any party size. Um, for instance, we just did a party of um, 300. Um, so we're capable of doing uh, multiple size parties and um, getting the job done. And our catering menu is kind of flexible. So with the private chef menu, we mostly focus on um, seasonal ingredients and things that are in season. And that's the pretty much the, the, the turnaround with the private chef. And, uh, we want you to enjoy seasonal things, so everything that we cook is in season, so um, it tastes better that way. But for catering, it's more flexible. So we build every menu out personally, uh, it's personalized by you, and we build it out. And 
you can order anything uh, from the catering side. Uh, we just about do everything um, on that side. And then Riley Company also has the Bistro. And I know a lot of you people see the Bistro face, uh, which the Bistro Punch, the Bistro Pie, the Bistro Shortcake, the Bistro Bread Pudding, the Bistro Pudding. Um, but the Bistro is pretty much the cooking show that we do on YouTube. Oh, man, we'll put the link in the description box below so you can go to uh, to the Bistro Cooking Show. But there we upload videos every Thursday at 7 p.m. and without fail. And um, we do everything from drinks to frozen treats to um, what's hot in restaurants. So that channel there is designed um, for the home cook to get kind of like that chefy feel and also get them the option instead of going out to actually prepare their favorite items that they get at restaurants in the comfort of their home. So you got Riley and Company, then you got those little umbrellas under Riley and Company, but today we pretty much focus this steak around the private chef company side of it. So the steak has been resting for five minutes. So we're gonna take all the herbs off and then we're gonna pop it onto our cutting board. And we're gonna begin to slice. Now, with any protein, you wanna slice against the grain. Now, if you look at a ribeye, you know you got like the deckle and then you got that center cut piece there. Um, the grains run a couple different ways. So you gotta kinda be careful with that. But um, for the first part, we're just gonna slice, you know, some big, some pretty good, nice, slices out of it. So a uh, sharp knife if possible. And just want to go ahead and just slice. And that's that color I was telling you about from edge to edge. Perfect temperature. If you did this in a pan, you will kind of see like you got gray area at the top and gray area at the bottom. And you might have that perfect temperature in the center, but it won't be edge to edge like a sous vide. And that's what the sous vide pretty much guarantees that you get that edge to edge coverage. So go ahead and slice it. And you can see all that juice just running out of there like this thing is gonna be good and juicy. We'll take the steak, and we're gonna pop it on our plate. Kind of fan it a little bit so you can see that temperature. Then we're gonna go ahead and finish with that finishing salt. And we just got some smoked um, all done sea salt. So we're just gonna finish it up above with that. Don't want to go too much. So there you have it, the finished product. I feel like that is the most simple way to finish a steak, but it also could be the most perfect way. Um, simplicity. I know you've seen I just season with salt and pepper, and the salt and pepper enhances the flavor of the beef. It's not going to change that flavor compound. A lot of people like to pile a lot of extra things on there, which can tend to take away from the steak, but you know, just placing salt and pepper on there and then adding those aromatics. You want everything just to complement the steak versus take control. So yeah, there you have it, man, the most perfect steak. Um, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Um, I got my man Tony here and um, you know, he's behind the camera, you know? So I wanna have him come into this shot and actually taste this steak for you guys. Cause I could be biased. So let's let Tony taste the steak. Uh, this is Tony. This is actually our cameraman for the Kick in the Bistro show. He filmed every last single Kick in the Bistro show. Um, but yeah, let's let Tony taste this steak. I've been looking forward to this moment, y'all. Oh, talk, I talk already, in my mic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I've been looking forward to this moment right here. Because <laughs> I know how he does with steaks. But let me go ahead and get my... That's going to be the most favorite piece right there. So look, it's got, it's got some bounce to it. Definitely got some moisture in that pool. <laughs> I'm smacking. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, best steak ever. Awesome. Best steak ever. I'm telling you, simple. So, yeah, you heard that from Tony. Um, and my thoughts behind steak is I want the steak to shine. That's why um, we go back to using the best quality product, uh, which is the prime steak. Um, use that, salt and pepper, um, garlic, your aromatics, uh, just equals the best steak. So yeah, man, I want to thank you guys for checking this episode out. Like I said, um, just my introduction to you guys. And we're going to do a couple more introductions where um, like today I introduced my private chef side, 
Um, the next time we're going to introduce the catering side and show you some options that we offer for catering. And then we're going to show um, you the bistro side. And the bistro side is a lot of fun because we get to create other things from, your, like I said, your favorite restaurant or your favorite um, whatever popping on the internet. We get to create those items as well. So um, this introduction is going to be a three part series of me um, being featured kicking the bistro. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for checking this video out. Like, comment, share, subscribe, kicking the bistro. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.